I'll be honest right from the start, I don't enjoy saying this, but the more I look at what's happened in the EV space over the past few years, the more convinced I am that Aptera being late might actually be one of the best things that could have happened to it. And trust me, this isn't coming from a place of patience or indifference, I want one badly. I wanted one months ago. I drive a lot more than I used to, my routine has changed, my household has changed, and there are so many days where I catch myself thinking how perfectly this vehicle would fit into my life right now. Even if it weren't completely finished, even if every last feature wasn't polished, I'd still take it. That's how much I want it. So this isn't me pretending delays don't hurt or acting like waiting is fun. It's not. I'm impatient too. But stepping back and looking at the bigger picture, it's hard to ignore how often being on time has turned out to be a trap rather than a victory in this industry. When you watch enough EV startups come and go, patterns start to emerge. One of the clearest patterns is that hitting an original delivery timeline doesn't actually come with many rewards. In fact, it often comes with serious penalties. Delivering on schedule usually means compromises and in the EV world, those compromises tend to land in the worst possible places – software, reliability, efficiency, and user experience. Those are the exact areas where early reviews can make or break a company. Once the first wave of customers and reviewers form an opinion, that perception is incredibly hard to undo. There are a couple of painfully clear examples of what happens when a company treats its timeline as sacred no matter the cost. Fisker is a textbook case. They committed publicly to a production and delivery window, and to their credit, they actually hit it. That alone is something many startups never managed to do. But what followed was a cascade of problems that completely overshadowed that achievement. Software felt unfinished, basic functionality caused frustration, and even something as fundamental as accessing the vehicle became an issue for some owners. Early reviews were brutal, and once that narrative took hold, demand collapsed. It didn't really matter that the vehicle itself might have had strengths or that the business model could have worked under different circumstances. The damage was done. Prices had to be slashed just to move inventory, and the brand never recovered from the first impression it made. Lordstown followed a similar path. They delivered when they said they would, albeit in small numbers, but the product didn't stand out in the ways it needed to. Efficiency was disappointing, range wasn't competitive, and the value proposition didn't make sense for the customers they were targeting. Fleet buyers, who were supposed to be the backbone of demand, weren't interested in an expensive and inefficient solution that didn't clearly outperform alternatives. In both cases, you can't help but wonder what might have happened if those companies had taken a step back, delayed mass production, and spent another year refining the fundamentals instead of racing the calendar. On the other side of that equation, you have companies that missed deadlines, sometimes by a lot, but ultimately benefited from taking their time. Tesla is the most obvious example. Multiple vehicles arrived far later than initially promised, and yet the brand as a whole understood that delivering something half-baked would do more harm than waiting. The Model S was late, the Model Y was very late, even the Cybertruck arrived well after its original timeline, and while opinions on it are all over the place, the financial reality speaks for itself. It found a market, it generates massive revenue, and it has a clearer path forward than many vehicles that technically launched on time. Rivian and Lucid tell similar stories. Both companies struggled with delays, production challenges, and growing pains, but they also learned firsthand how unforgiving early customers can be when infrastructure and software aren't ready. Those lessons matter, especially for a much smaller company with far less capital to burn. Aptera doesn't have the luxury of learning those lessons the hard way. It needs to get things right the first time because one bad launch cycle could define the brand permanently. That's where the second and more specific part of this argument really starts to matter. Timing isn't just about internal readiness, it's also about the world you're launching into. If Aptera had somehow secured all of its funding and entered volume production back in 2022, the reality is that it would have been walking into a brutal economic environment. Battery prices were extremely high, lithium costs were through the roof, supply chains were a mess, and inflation hadn't yet become the convenient explanation it is today. Under those conditions, there's almost no chance the vehicle would have launched anywhere near its originally advertised price. We'd likely be talking about something tens of thousands of dollars higher, and that alone would have driven a huge portion of reservation holders away. Even if you imagine a scenario where supply chains magically stabilized a year or two later, another massive problem would still be waiting. Charging infrastructure. 
This is an area where context really matters. For a vehicle that leans so heavily on efficiency and long-range capability, the charging experience isn't a small detail, it's a core part of the product. Launching into a world dominated by unreliable, crowded, and expensive CCS fast charging networks would have undermined one of Aptera's biggest strengths. Owners would have been forced into awkward compromises, relying on adapters that barely existed at the time, dealing with bulky cables that don't fit well, or paying premium prices at stations that erase much of the cost advantage of driving an efficient EV. We've already seen how this played out for other brands. Lucid owners, even with enormous range on paper, found themselves frustrated by long lines, slow speeds, and unreliable chargers in the most inconvenient places imaginable. Rivian customers went through similar growing pains, and Rivian survived that phase because it had the resources to start building its own charging network as a workaround. Aptera doesn't have that option. It can't afford to ship a vehicle that depends on an ecosystem that actively works against a good ownership experience. What makes the current timing so different is that the broader industry has finally started to align. More manufacturers are moving toward a common charging standard, access to reliable high-power networks is expanding, and the overall experience is becoming more predictable. That shift changes everything. Launching into an environment where customers can realistically rely on a robust fast charging network from day one dramatically reduces friction, complaints, and negative press. It allows the conversation to stay focused on what makes the vehicle unique instead of the headaches of ownership. There's also the software side of the equation, which is just as critical. Modern vehicles live and die by their software experience. Battery management, infotainment, mobile integration, and overall system stability are areas where early failures are brutally exposed by reviewers and owners alike. Taking extra time to get these systems right isn't optional anymore. Once vehicles are in customer hands, every flaw is magnified, documented, and shared. That first wave of impressions becomes the story people tell about the brand, sometimes for years. So yes, it's frustrating to wait. It's frustrating to see sunny parking lots and think about how much energy could have been captured. It's frustrating to see timelines slip again and again. But when you stack all of this together, the alternative looks far worse. A rushed launch into high battery prices, immature infrastructure, unfinished software, and an unforgiving review cycle could have crippled the company before it ever had a chance to find its footing. History suggests that slow and steady doesn't always win the race, but in this space, rushing almost guarantees you lose. Companies that survive long enough to refine their product, control their spending, and launch into a supportive ecosystem tend to have a much better shot at long-term viability. Aptera doesn't need to be first, it needs to be right. And as difficult as it is to admit when you're eager to be driving one already, waiting may very well be what allows it to succeed instead of becoming another cautionary tale in a crowded and unforgiving industry.